Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I just acquired a book, which was actually one of the very, 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 very books I bought in my life. This was in 1975, and I bought this book for two reasons. One, it caught my attention by the shiny cover and by the title, I Ain't Well, But I Sure Am Better. And during this time in my life, I went believing there was something wrong with me. So the title attracted me. And when I opened up the book, the book starts out in the very first chapter. I was also attracted by the fact that that looks just like the Daily News uh, headline. And it starts out, I'm Jess, I have a grave emotional problem. I have a serious social disease. And that hooked me right away. I said, that's me. I have a serious social disease. He put, he articulated it so well. Because what was my problem? There was something wrong with me, but I couldn't articulate what the problem was. And here he articulates it in this book. And I was just flipping through the pages. I just picked, I just bought it, just acquired it. And I just flipped through the pages, you know, because I read this book cover to cover, you know. And what does my, it, it, um, it didn't fall on this page. You know how you go through a used book and it's, the spine is broken and it falls on a page. Didn't fall on this page. I just was flipping through the page and something caught my attention right away. See what I'm saying? <laughs> that book didn't fall on the face. I got a fight to keep it open. To show you what this is. And I don't want to bend the, bend the spine. The spine's in good condition. And look what my fingers fall on. Let me see if I can get it. There you go. To have a close friend means that you are there when needed even though you do not know ahead of time that you're going to be needed. When we get, well, ah. Uh, 
When we get in trouble, the world usually closes in on us so much we can't even see our need for help. But when we have close friends, our inability to call for help doesn't hurt us. Because one of our friends will be by soon anyway. But this can't happen if I try to have a hundred friends. Uh, yeah, that's right, BJ. One of the things that my mother used to ask me, why can't I be like my sister? She has a hundred friends. What I used to say, she's a social butterfly. I said, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not a social butterfly. I don't have a hundred friends like she does. And I didn't, and I said, that makes some, that means there's something wrong with me. But in this book, he says, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. That's right, BJ. When we have close friends, our inability to call for help doesn't hurt us because one of our friends will be by soon anyway. Mm. That's why I have five friends. I don't think I had even that many. That doesn't sound like many to lots of people. But even with just five friends, I see how hard a time I have at being a good friend to them. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, but of course it goes on, you know. But they're a good friend to me, but am I a good friend to them? See, I want to be. I, 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 my sister says I give my shirt off to people, and I do. But sometimes I don't know how to be a good friend. I just don't know. I don't know what they know. They know how to be a good friend and they're there for me. But I don't know how to be a good friend to them. And this is summed up exactly Um, with my other friend, my other good close friend, his name is Ken, and we were college roommates, he was drinking soda, what others refer to as pop which to me, I don't call it pop because pop sounds like what you call your dad. You know, I'm okay, pop, you know. Um, but then I learned it was short for soda pop. I said, well, yeah, that's why I say soda. You know, I say soda, you say pop, they're both soda pop. So what, what can you do? But anyway, he had soda, and he was coming back into the room. I will never forget it. And a bubble caught in his throat, and he couldn't breathe. <coughs> and. I thought he was about to throw up. I thought he was 
uh, regurgitating. I've never ever seen anybody choke on a bubble in my life. So I don't know what to look for. I don't know what symptoms to look for. Or recognize symptoms if I saw it. So I thought he was going to vomit. Because it was sort of just after lunch that this happened. So I grab him to pull him into the bathroom. I said, come on, come on. Come on. And he kept pointing at his throat. And I kept saying, yeah, 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 that's why I'm trying to pull you in. That's why we're trying to go into the bathroom so you can throw up in the sink. But then all of a sudden the bubble popped as I pulled him. And he was able to breathe again. And I was confused. Uh, yeah. I was confused. I said, you okay now? He says, yeah, thank you. I was choking. I said, that was choking? I was stunned. I was like, Oh my God, I am so sorry. I, besides, I don't even know what to do for a choking person. Of course I know what to do now because I had a film. I went, I made sure I would look for a film about. Actually, I didn't have to look. I just happened to get it. But then when I saw what it was A for a choking victim, I was like, oh my God. Oh, now I know for a choking victim. And then I learned that the film is outdated. They don't do the... Because um, the film came out in 83 or 82. And um, they said, well, it's probably a reason why you have that film. It's outdated. So they put it in a, in a discard pile somewhere and then you came upon having it I bought it for five bucks because it was unknown film at the time until I brought it home and put on the projector and just watched it and then I put it on the reel and I thought Oh, choking victim, choking for an adult, a teenager, a baby, child victim, respiratory emergencies, choking. Uh, get, but, but that was the big thing. Because I didn't know he was choking. Do I know what to do now for choking victims? Well, now I know I can ask. Are you choking? Are you gonna vomit? Are you gonna vomit or are you gonna? Cho are you choking? One or the other. But that's what I mean about. Am I a good friend? I hope I am. My best friend says. Sometimes I'm not a good friend, my mom the same way, because I don't ask how they are. I'm told, you say all the time how you are, you never say, ask how you're doing. You never, mom says, you never call me up and ask me how am I doing. My best friend says, you don't ask me how I'm doing. And I'm thinking, well, you are healthy as an ox. That much I do know. You know. Now, when it comes to storms and everything, sure, I let them know, hey, there's a storm coming up. Please stay safe. But 
yeah. But otherwise, you know, I don't ask, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm trying to do that now. How are you feeling? When you have a social disease, Like, I have a social disease. Well, actually, you know, I have another friend. We got, we were talking on the phone. And he was a childhood friend. And I don't remember my childhood, but he does. And he said... You helped me deal with my son. I was like, what? He said, yeah, you, you as a friend, you helped me with my son. I said, I don't understand. He said, my son is autistic. And I said, my, your friendship with me, I helped you as a kid. I helped you with your son, who's autistic. He said, yeah. Huh? Dealing with you as a friend, I could deal with my son, my autistic son. And that's when I started. And then another thing went into me when I was reading about autism autism and the symptoms that they ran for autism and there are many but there are a lot of symptoms that I read that are me exactly like me to a T so I thought I'm autistic, but I'm not like other autistic children. Um, I have a Facebook friend who's who's autistic, and I feel like being friends with everybody. I tr I want to be your friend because I think I'm a good person. I know I'm a good person. Or I should say, I know I'm a good person, but I, and I think I'd be a good, and I think I'd be a good friend to you. Yeah. See, I'm not sure. I'm not. There's no guarantee. I can't guarantee that I'll be a good friend to you, but I'll always try. Okay. So I think I'm. I would be a good person to you. So I would. Um, say, you know, I, I will do my best to be a good friend to you. If you want my friendship, I would like it. I, you know. So, I then realized, hey, maybe that was my problem as a kid. I'm autistic. So maybe the social, maybe that's the social disease. Autistic. Maybe this was, this was in 75. So this was years before they were able to identify autism, you know. But I'm sure if he wrote this book now, maybe he would see where he fits in the wide scope of autism. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about this book and about what I, what I read this morning just now. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye.